So we're continuing our series in the factoring methods here. Now, this is a term that I use. There's nothing mathematical about the word easy. These I call the easy trinomials. And you'll see why in a few minutes, why I call them easy trinomials. It's important that you recognize that first. And that's always the first step in factoring. Recognize the method that you're going to use. Focus on that method. And I will look at several examples with you on using the factoring method of the easy trinomial. There's knowledge that you need to know in order to use the factoring method of the easy trinomial. Your basic algebraic operations, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Before we get into the steps of how we factor using the easy trinomial method, remember I always said it's important that you recognize why you're using the easy trinomial. So here on the board, you have six examples. Is there anything that you notice? Is there anything the same? Is there anything different? What can you say about these six examples? If we look at the first five examples, in all five examples, you have three terms. Notice they're in decreasing order of exponents. What do I mean by that? Here there's an exponent 2. Here it's understood the exponent is 1. And here we've got a numerical value. And they're all like that. Exponent 2, exponent 1, and a number. 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 That's what we mean by they are in decreasing order of exponents. Now, the other thing that's common in all five expressions, there is no number in front of the variable squared. It's understood that there is a 1. We say that these expressions are written in the form x squared plus bx plus c. We'll look at this one later on in this voice thread. This chart will be useful for you for any factoring method. Always verify if there is a GCF first. If there is no GCF, you ask yourself how many terms. If there are three terms, it's either the easy trinomials or the decomposition. Notice a while ago, like I mentioned, the easy trinomials is when you have it in decreasing order of exponents and when the coefficient of the first term is 1. These are the steps that I will go through in this voice thread in order to help you factor when you have an easy trinomial. By that I mean x squared plus bx plus c, where the coefficient of the first term is 1. So that's what you must always recognize in order to use this technique. The task is to factor. Recognize the type of factoring method you're going to use. Always ask if there's a GCF. There is no GCF. There is no greatest common factor. Therefore, we count the number of terms. There are three terms. When there are three terms, it's either the easy trinomials or the decomposition method. Easy trinomials is when the coefficient of the first term is 1. Easy trinomials, easy because you can place your two sets of brackets that represent your factors. You can place them immediately. Then what do you do? You take the square root of the first term. Square root of x squared is x. That is the first term 
in both factors. Easy enough so far? Let me go to the next step. Now this is the part where the students always struggle a little bit. You must now find two numbers. Two numbers, when added together, give you the coefficient of the middle term. And at the same time, those same two numbers, when multiplied together, give you the coefficient of the last two terms. Now if you struggle with that, use your calculator. What do I mean by the coefficient of the middle term? Here's my middle term. The coefficient is a positive 7. And the last term is positive 10. So two numbers are added together give you positive 7. When multiplied, give you, give you a positive 10. Can you think of two numbers? I'll show it to you, but why don't you try it first? Did you get that the two numbers are positive 5 and positive 2? Because positive 5 plus positive 2 is equal to positive 7. And at the same time, those same two numbers, positive 5 times positive 2 is equal to 10. Why do I say it's easy? We take these numbers and these are the second term in each of those factors. My factors are x plus 5, x plus 2. You can FOIL that and verify. Do you have x squared plus 7x plus 10 after you FOIL these factors? I hope so. Let's go up in a level of difficulty. Is there a GCF? No. How many terms? Three. Is there a number in front of the variable squared? It's understood the number is one. Therefore, it's an easy trinomial. Place your two sets of brackets immediately. You can now find your two factors. What do you do? You find the square root of the first term. First term is x squared. When I find the square root of x squared, it gives to me x. I place that in each factor. It's the first term in each factor. What do I do next? I take out my calculator. Two numbers, when added together, give me the coefficient of the middle term. When multiplied, give me the coefficient of the last term. What are those two numbers? Plus 3 and negative 10. Take your calculator out. Try and find those two numbers. It's extremely important that you always verify and double check your numbers. It's easy to make a mistake. Positive 5 plus a negative 2 is indeed positive 3. And at the same time, we must verify that positive 5 times negative 2 is equal to negative 10, which is the last term. We are correct. Therefore, we have our two factors x plus 5 times x minus 2.
How about this example? Notice we have three terms. Notice they are in descending order of exponents. Notice the first term, the coefficient is one. Therefore, we're going to use the method of easy trinomials. Let's place our brackets, then find the square root of a squared. Square root of a squared is a. We're going to place the a in the first term in each factor. Then we've got to look for two numbers. Two numbers when multiplied together give us the coefficient, sorry, when added, first thing, when added, give us the coefficient of the middle term, and when multiplied, give us the coefficient of the last term. The next slide will give you some tips. Now these numbers aren't too large, but you're going to see at some point the num numbers will become large. And students will often say to me, Miss, I just don't know what the two numbers are. So in the next tile, you're going to see uh, me demonstrating on the calculator how to find those two numbers. Meanwhile, can you think of two numbers that at the same time, the sum is equal to negative one, and the product is equal to negative 72. Do you happen to know what those two numbers are? And why don't you look at how I can provide help for you by using your calculator? So the two numbers are positive 8 and negative 9. When I add these two numbers, it gives to me negative 1. When I multiply the two numbers, it gives to me negative 72. So inside our factors, I can now place my positive 8 and my negative 9. These are the factors of the trinomial a squared minus a minus 72. Recognize that there's an easy trinomial. As soon as you see there is an easy trinomial, place your two sets of brackets. Find the square root of the first term. Square root of m squared is m. m is a term in each factor. It's the first term in each factor. Then you're going to look for two numbers. When added together give you positive 5. When multiplied together give you the last term which is negative 14. Do you know what those two numbers are? Did you get that the two numbers are positive 7 and negative 2? Why is that? Add them. Always verify to make sure you have the correct numbers. Positive 7 plus negative 2 is indeed positive 5. And positive 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. I found my two numbers. Therefore, my factors are m plus 7, m minus 2.
why don't you try this one before I show you all the steps. First thing is to recognize that it's an easy trinomial. Why do I call it easy? Well, as soon as you recognize that, you can place your two sets of brackets and you can find your factors immediately. Then you look for the square root of the first term. Square root of b squared is b. That is the first term in each factor. Then you're going to look for two numbers. When added together, give you the coefficient of the middle term. When multiplied, give you the coefficient of the last term. The coefficient of the middle term is negative 8. Coefficient of the last term is positive 12. Take a moment, look for those numbers, then look at the answers. Did you get that the two numbers are negative? Did, do you understand that negative 6 plus a negative 2 equals negative 8? And at the same time, when multiplying those same two numbers, negative 6 and negative 2, that gives you a positive 12. Now we know the last terms in each factor. Our factors are b minus 8, b minus 2. How about this one? Hmm, I have three terms, but they're not set up the way an easy trinomial should be set up. Do you have a suggestion? So in order to decide what method to use, always ask yourself, how many terms? Here, there are three terms. In an easy trinomial, they should be in decreasing order of exponents, and the coefficient of the first term is 1. Well, I do have three terms. I can rearrange this to make it an easy trinomial. I have exactly the same terms. I've got positive x squared plus 4x minus 60. I've rearranged it so that they are in decreasing order of exponents. What are you going to do now? You're going to place your two sets of brackets. You're going to find the square root of the first term. Square root of x squared is x. That is the first term in each factor. Then you're going to look for two numbers. Two numbers, when added, give you the coefficient of the middle term. When multiplied, give you the coefficient of the last term. When added, give you positive 4. That's our coefficient of the middle term. And when multiplied, the last number is negative 60. Do you know what those two numbers are? Take your calculator and look for them. I hope you found the two numbers on your own. I hope you didn't have to look at the answers. If you had to look at the answers, it's important that you get more practice in finding those two numbers. And hopefully the little tip that I gave you with the calculator will help you find those two numbers.
So the two numbers are positive 10 and negative 6. When I add them, it gives me positive 4. When I multiply it, it gives me negative 60. Now I know what my factors are. My factors are x plus 10, x minus 6. As mentioned before, it's important that you practice more of these. But here is a summary of your steps for when you recognize that it is a factoring method of the easy trinomial. Good luck.